Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is Cheng Cheng. I'm a graduate student with Salton at Columbia University. I'm going to present our most recent paper on the ultra short period massive black hole binary candidates in LSST as LISA verification binaries. So here's an overview. We know that when uh, LSST operates, it's going to discover a large amount of quasars, likely in the order of 10 to 100 millions. Quasars are triggered by galaxy mergers, and a significant fraction of quasars could be powered by massive black hole mergers. So out of these binaries, a tiny fraction can eventually evolve into the Lisa frequency band uh, in their late inspiraling stage. So these are the verification massive black hole binaries, which are analogous but different from the galactic white dwarf binaries in Lisa. Uh, analytically, the number of quasars in LSST can be computed under some assumptions about the quasar luminosity functions. For this, we adopt a recent work from Gerich Kokarni et al. 2019, or hereafter I'm just going to refer it as K19. This work is good for us because it's a large compilation of data from all major optical surveys. Their luminosity function takes the form of double power law, which is dependent on four parameters. Uh, phi star, which is the normalization parameter, m star, which is the breaking magnitude, uh, as well as the bright end and the faint end slopes, alpha and beta. So these four parameters are um, redshift dependent, and K19 reports the values of these parameters at 25 redshifts. So to obtain uh, smooth functions of z, we interpolate these parameters at 50 evenly separated values of z. And at last, we can relate quasar luminosity with the total black hole mass, assuming that F Eddington is 30% and um, a standard quasar spectrum template. So this is our first set of results. Our prediction for the number of quasars in LSST are shown here with the solid black curves. Um, so uh, these numbers are a function of redshifts in 11 different uh, I magnitude bins. Uh, for each bin, we estimate n for uh, 50 redshift values. For reference, we also compared with the number computed from the fiducial K19 luminosity functions, as well as the results from the official LSST science book. So the curves generally agree to each other, especially at the most relevant redshifts between 2 to 3. Uh, however, for the fainter bins where the data is absent, we need to extrapolate the luminosity functions to get the estimates. Overall, we found uh, that for redshift up to 7, within uh, the LSST single detection limit, we expect 20 million quasars, and if LSST can co-add the data and detect objects as faint as 26 magnitude, then we expect to discover 100 million quasars. There are, of course, some level of uncertainties in these numbers, mostly coming from the uncertainty in the luminosity functions. Uh, and by co-adding many visits, it's possible for LSST to achieve lower detection limits and discover essentially more binary candidates at lower masses. So to decide which binaries can evolve into the LISA band, we use a recent LISA sensitivity curve from Robson et al. 2019. We illustrate the evolutionary tracks of uh, some binaries whose primary masses are 10 to the 5, 10 to the 7, uh, 10 to the 6, and 10 to the 7 solar masses, uh, assuming a mass ratio of 0 0.1. So in each set of these curves, there are three tracks uh, corresponding to redshift values 1, 3, and 5, so from top to bottom. Here we assume uh, that leaf LISA lifetime is five years. This comes from the fact that LSST operation begins around uh, the mid 2020s and LISA begins around mid 2030s. So this number could vary and we say that the mission lifetime could be anywhere from approximately five to 15 years. Okay, so now we want to know the number of verification binaries that can be detectable by LISA during its operational time. Uh, for this, we use a simple model where we assume the fraction of n is dependent on the time to merger of the binary over the lifetime uh, and multiplying by some fraction of quasars that are assumed to be associated with 
a ultra compact massive black hole merger. So uh, since binaries need to accumulate enough signal to noise for the entire LISA mission lifetime, we assume that Tm is at least equal to 5 to 15 years. So these numbers should be uh, familiar to you from the last slide. A general assumption for quasar lifetime is 10 to the 7 years, and uh, we assume that most quasars are associated with uh, some massive black hole mergers, so fqb is approximately equal to 1. We end up getting that the number of verification binaries in LISA is proportional to tm over tq times n. So in this simple model, we have uh, actually have the advantage of easily adjusting the resulting number uh, if even if we have different assumptions of TM and TQ because NLISA scales linearly to both of these numbers. So NLISA is a function of total black hole mass and redshift. Here we assume that TM is 15 years. We find that most objects concentrate around Z equals to 2 and uh, the lower mass end uh, at 10 to the 5 solar mass, which corresponds to the fact that uh, the faint end of the luminosity function is steep. So the peak uh, at z equals to 2 is consistent with the largest amplitude of the phi star parameter in the luminosity function. The top panel shows the histogram of NLISA integrated over all masses, and the right-hand side, uh, right side panel is the same thing, integrated over all redshifts. We find that LISA can detect 150 objects down to magnitude of 26, but if more constraints are imposed on the detection limits of LSST, then we have uh, these three curves representing the detection limits of MI equals to 24, 25, and 26 from top to bottom. So only objects above these limits can be counted at the end. After we account for these constraints, we have the resulting numbers here. And we can see that uh, if we're able to co at the LSST visits and achieve lower detection limits, then we have a higher total number of verification binary at the end. Okay, last, uh, I want to emphasize that from our calculations, the low mass binaries with ultra short periods dominate the LISA detectable sample. So this is directly shown with the distribution of orbital periods of the binaries for both TM equals to 5 years and TM equals to 15 years. So both distributions show peaks around 1 to 2 days, and we can observe the peak more closely in the zoom-in figure. So yeah, now in, in a bigger picture perspective, I think it's very interesting that we found a handful of ultra-short period quasars in LSST. This means that over years of observation, we might observe changes in periods possibly from days to hours during the gravitational wave driven phase of these massive black hole binaries. So this will be a robust evidence that we have found the quote unquote needle in the haystack binaries among tens or possibly hundreds of millions of quasars in LSST. So to summarize the findings of our work, first we found that LSST is expected to discover 20 to 100 million quasars in the mass range of 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 9 solar mass and redshift down to 7. Among these quasars, 10 to 150 are ultra compact binary massive black holes that may be detectable as future gravitational wave sources in LISA frequency band. The main con uncertainty in these numbers come from the uncertainty in the luminosity function. In particular, we need better faint end uh, slope of the luminosity function. Also, co-adding the LSST data is required to search for faint sources as ultra-short uh, periods, um, typically smaller than one day. And over a long period of time, we might be able to observe the chirping of these short period quasars in LSST. So this would be a practical application of the needle in the haystack problem. Uh, and this could be a robust evidence of the existence of a massive black hole binary. The last point, which is not mentioned previously, is that our analysis also works in the reverse direction, in that the LST detection can also guide the searches of periodicity in the archival LST data. Thank you.